first stage of the service life cycle, which is the service strategy. Service strategy is the first stage. And here we would like to know, as I said, from service creation to service retirement. And here is the first stage. So basically in this stage, we talk about the, our objectives, our goals, what we trying to achieve, you know, what kind of service we want to provide. That's covered in this service strategy. A clear identification of definition of services and who are the customers and the customer who wants to use them. So we want to see which services our customers are interested in. Um, for example, now coming back to, because, you know, as we have a limited time, so if we can equate the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the quote, the example, it will be much easier for us to understand. So let's come back to the same internet access uh, example. Let's say I am an ISP, internet service provider, and I provide internet services to my customers. Now, service strategy stage is you know makes me uh, gives me an opportunity as a service provider to see if i need to offer new services modified services and i do i need to retire some of the services in which my customers don't see any value anymore so l l let me give you an example um, for example, uh, in, in this, uh, as an ISP, I'm actually providing dial-up services, you know, the, through the, uh, let's, let's take an example. I'm currently providing dial-up internet services. But then if I look into my customers, I see that they are now interested in broadband services um, because of the uh, lower bandwidth, because of the, uh, you know, um, the expect of, uh, you know, the missing reliability factor, they, they, not, they don't see much value in uh, dial-up services anymore. So, because my customers also may have customers. And so they have also their own direction, you know, how they're going to go. So they do see value in, you know, migrating to or, you know, acquiring the broadband services. So if I look into my customers and if I see, you know, my uh, corporate customers are interested in and they see more value and this is what the trend is, this is what their expectations is, are and they see more value in there. So it, this is the time I need to get into the broadband services. And this strategy is the phase where I can set the objectives, I can set my, uh, you know, aims that, for example, we are XYZ ISP, Internet Service Provider. We would like to now offer broadband services. You know, gradually we would like to uh, retire our dial-up services because our we see that our customers, uh, we you know and see more value in these uh, broadband services. And also we see a huge market. We see a growing number of uh, corporate customers are interested in broadband services. So this is what we're talking about the strategy where we set the objectives. You know, we have goals looking at what our customers are looking for, what they see, you know, and what they expect in terms of value. And so, so we, we may want to retire our existing dial-up services. We may also want to modify our existing services because we realize that our customers are interested in um, high bandwidth or the broadband services. So in service strategy phase, we create value for our customers by coming up with these you know, objectives with these long-term goals. So in this stage, we think about why something has to be done. You know, we're not concerned about how we're gonna go, how we're going to do it. Because in this stage of strategy, we don't get into the specifics of the hardware, software, um, or the exact details. 
we do mention that, for example, we're going to use the DSL, you know, for our broadband services, and we will have a, we will be upgrading our infrastructure to optical. But then we don't get exactly into the, you know, exact details or the specifications that how we're going to implement this, um, you know, a strategy. So we just talk about the high level about the, um, you know, the, uh, the what are the targets and this is where we want to go into the broadband. We'll be upgrading of our existing infrastructure. We'll be offering these new DSL based broadband services. And this is how, so we're not going to talk about the, uh, you know, how, but rather why, why we want to do this because our customers see value in there. Now, there are some uh, processes associated with uh, this stage. As I said, every stage of service life cycle has processes associated with it. So which one are the most common processes in the service strategy? Well, that's the service portfolio management. What is the service portfolio management, if I can quickly explain? Um, service portfolio management is about all the services. It, it actually shows the mix of or the balance of all the services a service provider is offering or, um, you know, associated or, you know, in, in, with the service provider. For example, the services which are in pipeline, which service provider hasn't, um, you know, uh, the uh, delivered yet, but which will be available in the future. So future services, then all the existing services which are available right now, customers can order and acquire those services. And the third category is the services which we as a service provider wants to retire. You know, there are services in which we don't see any value anymore. So we want to retire some of those services. So service portfolio management has these three uh, category of services. As I said, the services which are, you know, in future in the pipeline, the services which we are offering right now and the customers can order and the services which are uh, we going to retire. Then the other uh, process with this is the business relationship management. Business relationship management is basically between the customer and the service provider relationship. It gives an opportunity to service provider to understand more about the customer's environment, customer's expectations, customer's changing business need, you know, what the uh, value customer considers in a service. So these are the things we discuss in the business relationship management where we, you know, it's, it's a strategic relationship with the customer where we see that, you know, we, uh, we have a normally a dedicated employee, the account executive for that customer who spends more time in the customer environment and see what their customer's, you know, direction is, what services they may be looking at in their changing environment in their future. And so this is what about the, so trying to understand more about the customer's expectation. Then there's also a demand management, which is also important from the service perspective because you need to know, you know, how much demanding that service is. And for that, you may need to understand the patterns of the business activity. For example, during certain time of the year, like in the holiday season, we get a lot of demand for certain products. For example, during the holiday season, we get a lot of uh, demand for the uh, electronics items, um, you know, these uh, shopping items and these things. So we need to understand when the demand for that particular service is at, you know, very high or, you know, when it is low. So in this way, we can manage it. And of course, in the service strategy phase, we need to also consider the financial aspect because when you're setting up the targets, when you're setting up the objectives, for example, you want to migrate from dial-up to the broadband services, 